If there's anybody in the United States who has the best understanding of Afghan history, it's our next speaker. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Tamim Ansari. Well, first of all, I want to uh, thank you guys. Afghan beat, you guys rock. I didn't even know about you before, but now I do, and I, I really admire you. I also want to say, uh, I also want to say I just finished reading Atta's book. I found it really interesting, and the curious thing is, it wasn't the story I hadn't heard. In fact, it's a story I've heard a lot. It's every Afghan story. You're right, there are, there are more dramatic uh, stories. But most of the Afghans I know that came to this country, they had these experiences that are like that, and yet I've never seen them all put in a book in that very simple human way, and I really enjoyed your book, so thank you for that. And, <laughs> Uh, Fareba, your, your work is brilliant, your book is brilliant, uh, your comments here were just so interesting, and uh, uh, I think you're one of the bravest people I know, so, <laughs> so thank you for being here. Um, you know, in regards to the questions we're talking about here tonight, the thing that occurs to me is that you always hear about xenophobia with, with Afghans, and I think uh, that's two-sided or there's, that can be exaggerated. Uh, because you know, um, and the other thing you hear that's connected to that is Afghans have never been conquered. But actually they've been conquered a lot. And the people who have conquered Afghanistan are now called Afghans. That's who we are, we're all the different people who came through there. Uh, things changed a couple of hundred years ago because for the first time, the, the forces that impinged on Afghanistan were not people who were coming through who ended up leaving pockets of themselves in the valleys of Afghanistan and became, became you know, they may have been traitors, they may have been invaders, they may have been whatever, but they became neighbors. Uh, and, um, uh, but two, three hundred years ago when the British first arrived, they were not actually interested in conquering Afghanistan or living in Afghanistan. They actually had no interest in Afghanistan. Uh, they were interested in Russia, and Afghanistan just happened to be in the way. Uh, not, not even in the way, but the place where they fought their fight with each other. Um, and you know, uh, if you, uh, if you, uh, uh, I'm sure most of you guys see some football sometimes. Do you guys see football? Okay, so you know those, those uh, teams line up, and then they're crashing together? Well, we happen to be, our country happens to be right where those teams are crashing together. They're not interested in us, but we get trampled. So that's what's happened in Afghan history. But here's, here's the other interesting thing. Uh, because we come from so many places and we're so, you know, uh, our history is so diverse and so colorful, um, we are not a nation that say like the French are all French, the uh, Iranians are all Persian, but we are a lot of different things. Uh, we are diversity defined. Um, and I often hear uh, from various people the question raised that is Afghanistan uh, really a country? You know, maybe it's just a bunch of ethnic groups and it should fall apart or something like that. And I also hear, I have to tell you, I hear from Iranians sometimes, well, Afghanistan is just uh, the uh, eastern province of Iran. And I've heard this also from Indian folks that, well, Afghanistan is just the northwestern frontier of, of uh, the Indian uh, civilization. But actually, if you look through history, all the way going back, what you discover is that there's always been a there there. There's always been a, a distinct, both political, cultural, and social entity in this Afghanistan area. Uh, you know, Alexander the, the, the Great came through. Uh, he did conquer Afghanistan. He died. They took his body away. But for a couple of hundred years, there, was a, uh, there were Greek kingdoms in Afghanistan. And the city of Kandahar, actually the name was originally Iskandahar. You know, Iskandar was the, was the way they pronounced the name Alexander then. And Kandahar originally, you know, for a couple of centuries, the language they spoke there was Greek. So this is a very diverse country. Uh, and I think it's, it's interesting to note that it has had some kind of a continuity as, a, as an entity for many thousands of years, actually. Um, so, <clears throat> Obviously, there is some kind of a country here. And a couple of hundred years ago, 250 years ago, 
when it began to form into the kind of countries we have all over the, the world today, a nation state, it happened to be at the very same time that these uh, uh, European foreign entities had begun to push against each other and this country was their, was their field of scrimmage. So the, the question of Afghanistan becoming a nation state has always been complicated by the fight that's going on in that territory by other powers that have a completely different story. Their, their story is their own agenda. We also have our story, however, and our story has to do with uh, something to do with drawing together all of our different parts and finding a way to be some kind of a unified something. Um, I want to address the fact that the, the and you guys have, have talked about it, but I just want to say these few words. Um, you know, um, uh, sometimes I hear that, well, you can't bring peace to Afghanistan because those people have been fighting for thousands of years. And actually, sometimes they fight, but sometimes they don't. That's actually the case in most places. Uh, and as I was writing my history, Games Without Rules, I was remembering that when I was a kid growing up in Afghanistan, we looked back and said, oh, there was this, this terrible time, you know, uh, uh, there was a revolution in Afghanistan, there was violence, uh, Amon Allah fell, Bache Sakao came, there was fighting. Um, and, and we thought of that as, as, as having been a violent moment, or violence, violence in our history. I look at the, the history of Afghanistan and I discover that, well, that was a, a year or two. That was actually a blip. Uh, actually, Afghanistan was pretty much at peace from the turn of the century right up into the uh, mid-70s. Um, and, you know, I remember that when I was a kid um, in Kabul, and my, my sister went to first grade at, uh, I can't remember what the school was, maybe it was Rabi Balhi already, but anyway, she went to, to first grade, and she would, she would get on a bus, and she would go there, and on the way back, if she wanted to stop, she might stop at my grandmother's house and, uh, and have some shawa. And eventually she'd come back. And I'm going, where in this country do you send a first grader off on a bus to some school elsewhere in the city and you don't worry because you know she'll come back. If she's not home, she's probably at her grandmother's. You, I would never have had anything like that with my first grader when she was, a, when she was young. Um, so there was that, that time of, of peace in Afghanistan. I have to say I grew up in that time. You know, I left Afghanistan in 1964 and it was really my whole life there was, was during the, uh, the time that I didn't even realize how good it was. And uh, at the time when we were in school, we were told um, the shape of our history is, you know, there were these dramatic uh, wars with the British, then we won our independence, and that's, that's the shape of our history. Our flag was a representative of that, you know, the, the, the black was for the, uh, period of being oppressed by the foreigners, uh, the blood was the blood shed for independence and the green was for the, the peace and independence we had as a Muslim nation. But what we didn't know then was that the biggest event of our history, the defining event of Afghan history wasn't back there. It was in the future and it was so close that the shadow was already falling on us and we didn't even know it. And then it came. And now these last 30 years have been a hugely um, incredibly violent time. This country has been more smashed and, and stomped uh, than most other places on earth. There are some competitors for most stomp, but it's really, it's really there amongst the, the countries that have, have seen the most suffering. And I think back to when I was a, a kid and we had this culture that had all these things. Now look, you know, uh, there are all these elements in Afghan culture. For example, men, Afghan men, uh, they are macho. And you know, uh, when I was a kid, uh, all of me and my friends, not me so much, I, I wasn't very macho, I wish I had been more so, but my, my friends, uh, young boys, uh, it was a badge of pride that they're, uh, they got beaten by their, by, by their elder brothers or their fathers. Um, and, you know, they, they took it, that was part of becoming a man. But what I, what I also say is that it was a complicated culture all interwoven with many parts. And one part was like this, and then another part was balancing it out. And for example, uh, you know, we were all so aware of our families, and we didn't want to bring shame on our families, and it, we, we wanted to behave ourselves, and in the terms of the outside world, that controlled our behavior. And, uh, 
You know, so there was a complicated fabric that was all held in place, and that's why we were a peaceful place. This war came, and it shattered that fabric. And anything like this, this you know, if there is a, uh, uh, a culture trait of wanting to be a, a tough guy and, and being proud of being beaten, that has no restraint now because your family is not there. The, the country was destroyed. The people have become refugees. You're on your own. So these, these things that we've seen in Afghanistan in the, in the time, in these last few decades, and probably since most of you guys came, that's not the Afghan culture. That's the war culture. Uh, and I think, you know, I'm going to repeat what you guys said. This is what... Uh, what we have to keep reiterating and reminding the world outside of what we've been through and how that relates to uh, the, 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 the things that are said about Afghanistan, about you know, the violence or the, 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 the uh, cruelty to women and stuff. That's the result of what happened to us. And I say, you know, I, as a historian, I can say that I look into it and I say, you know this ethnic thing about all the ethnic groups fighting and stuff, Actually, not so much. There have been periods when one group has fought another, but uh, for the most part, people got along. It isn't the case that Afghans have been fighting because they belong to different ethnic groups. It's the case that the war has exacerbated the sense of hostility amongst, amongst different ethnic groups. And you know, once a war happens, then it's really complicated to unravel from that. Because you don't, you don't remember who it was that that, uh, that killed your father, but you, but you remember what ethnic group. And that's the kind of thing that you have to find a way to get past. And so, you know, somebody uh, said to me, uh, and I, I really uh, thought it was moving and true. He said, um, um, wait, what? <laughs> what did he say? Um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Um, oh yeah, uh, he said, Reconstruction is a good thing, and, uh, and that's good, we're building roads and stuff, but as Afghans, we have to deal with this question of reconciliation, and that's an important part of our task. That's in Afghanistan, but I think you guys are also involved in it in some way. Last point I want to make, uh, you know, I was there uh, uh, this last year in Kabul, and I was just amazed at the vitality of Afghan society. Yeah, there's lots of stuff that you could criticize. And of course, you know, the, the mansions and the people living in, in metal containers right outside, that's a bad thing. But I was so impressed by the fact that nobody I saw was, you know, was, was whining about their fate. They were all just sort of like strong and they were going at it. And the country was, was you know, had all this kind of like the, the cell phones had come in and the technology was out there and I was in the villages and people had TVs and they had solar panels and there was all this stuff and you know I just read that um, uh, banking by phone is a technology, social technology that's, that's more advanced than in Afghanistan than in most other places including here and I said to myself you know this could be where the future is happening right now. This is where uh, not loaded down with the infrastructure of the 20th century, Afghanistan might be poised to go into the 22nd century before it gets here. So, <laughs> and so I look forward to that. Thank you all.